Most people struggle with productivity not because they don't have the right tools, but because they don't have the right system. A cluttered Mac, a disorganized workflow and the wrong apps can slow you down more than you think. Plus, when you pay so much money for a MacBook, you better get the best out of it. And so, in this video, I'll show you the exact MacBook setup I use to stay focused, organized and efficient. So hopefully, you can find some tips and tricks to apply to your own workflow. And just so you know, this is the exact system I use to run a 7-figure business coach hundreds of professionals and how to create content for this channel. Every app, every setting and every workflow is optimized to make work easier and faster, with zero chances to be distracted. So let's start with the foundation, workflow. My philosophy is very simple, minimize distractions and maximize focus. And for that I use focus mode to block notifications and create a workspace optimized for deep work. I do this because it's the only way I can protect my time and be super efficient. If you're anything like me, as soon as I get distracted, even if it's just a 2 minutes phone call, it completely destroys my flow, which is why I don't allow it to happen. When I'm in focus mode, the only notifications I receive are from my calendar or phone calls or messages from a few key people. Everything else is silenced. Next, I keep my dock incredibly clean. Only the essential apps I use daily reside here. Everything else is tucked away in folders or accessed through Spotlight. This minimizes visual clutter and prevents me from getting sidetracked. So if your desktop looks like a junkyard, that's the first thing to fix. Now let's talk about organizing your finder and file system properly. Most people I know just throw all their files into downloads or desktop, and then they waste time searching for them later. But a clean file system equals a clear mind. So if your desktop is full of random files, turn on stacks. You can right click and use stacks. Automatically groups files by type making everything look instantly cleaner. You can also group by date, tags or apps to organize it your way. And to have quick access to important folders, instead of clicking through Finder every time, you can customize your Finder sidebar. You can add folders you use daily, like work, content, templates, remove folders you don't need to declutter the sidebar, or even use tags to categorize files by projects, urgency or type. You can also create smart folders, which gives you instant access to what matters. Smart folders automatically filter and show files based on criteria you set. For example, a smart folder for all files created this week, or a smart folder that shows all PDFs in your system, or even a smart folder that filters all your Final Cut projects. This makes finding files way faster instead of manually searching. You can also use a simple file naming system that can save you hours over time. For example, you can always name files clearly and consistently, like project name underscore date instead of untitled one. So at the end of the day, if you optimize your finder and file organization, you will never waste time searching for files again. Now let's dive deep into the core of my setup, the apps I rely on to get things done. Notion and Exiles. This is where my day starts. For project management, task organization and building a comprehensive knowledge base, I turn to Notion, or I used to, I should say. I've been using and exploring Xtiles as a potential alternative for a few weeks now, particularly for visualizing complex projects and information. And let me tell you, I'm loving it. From the aesthetics to the incredibly easy and user-friendly interface, I can see myself totally switching to this platform. For my use case, I find it much faster to use and it's so much simpler than Notion that I actually didn't even need to watch a single tutorial to create this beautiful workspace. And the best part, it's just like Notion, the free version is more than enough for most users. There are some downsides though, the iPad version being the most significant for me. The main issue is that you can't do simple things like navigate through your pages. Still. I'm very excited to see how it evolves and at least for now it does everything I need. Next up, it's gotta be the Apple Notes. This is my digital brain. I use it for everything, from brainstorming and outlining scripts to jotting down quick ideas and keeping track of meeting notes. The integration with my iPhone and iPad is seamless, allowing me to access my notes from anywhere. And the best part? It's free. It comes with your Mac. Apple Notes has come a long way since it was launched. You can create folders to stay organized add links from websites or save images you might need for future reference. And now with Apple Intelligence, you can summarize long tests, rewrite them in different ways or even create tables and lists. So for me, it's a must use app. Next is Freeform. When I need to think visually and see the big picture, Freeform is my go-to app. It's perfect for mind mapping, collaborative brainstorming and sketching out ideas. And although I mostly use it on my MacBook for review projects, I still think it's worth mentioning since it's my go-to app for these kind of tasks. More importantly, it's completely free, again, it comes with all Apple devices. 
I find it much easier to work on the iPad simply because of the ability to use the Apple Pencil, which makes managing everything much faster, or at least to me. Now, this one might seem like a small detail, but it actually makes a huge difference in my productivity. I'm talking about the web browser I use. A lot of people don't even think about their browser when optimizing their Mac setup, but it can actually make a huge difference in performance and workflow. Here's why I use Safari as my primary browser. So, unlike Chrome, which drains battery and eats RAM, Safari is designed to be lightweight and power efficient. And that means longer battery life and better speed, because it's optimized for macOS. There's also tab groups, one of my favorite features for productivity. Instead of keeping dozens of random tabs open, I organize them by topic. I can have a research group, a content planning group, a metrics group, and this way everything stays clean and easy to access. Also something very important is that Safari blocks trackers and ads by default, so you're not constantly being followed around the web. The high distraction feature lets you remove unnecessary clutter from web pages with one click, making reading articles way smoother. So Safari isn't perfect. If you need Chrome-only extensions or specific web apps, you might need a different browser. But if you want speed, privacy and battery efficiency, it's hands down the best for Mac users. Now, in 2025, AI is no longer a futuristic concept, it's a productivity partner. And for me, ChatGPT has become an essential tool in my workflow, helping me save time, generate ideas and refine my content. I use it to generate new ideas for videos, articles and projects. It also helps me refine my scripts. Since English is not my first language, I use ChatGPT to help me refine my scripts, improve clarity and make sure my message is as impactful as possible. But one of the most interesting ways I use AI is for challenging my own viewpoints. Instead of just looking for confirmation, I'll ask what are the best arguments against my opinion on X topic. And this forces me to think critically, refine my stance and sometimes even adjust my perspective. So in 2025, AI is not a replacement for creativity or deep thinking. But if used correctly, it can be a game changer for productivity. And so far I've covered the apps I use daily to stay productive, organized and focused. But since I create content, whether it's for YouTube or other platforms, my workflow wouldn't be complete without these three essential creative tools. So if you edit videos on a Mac, Final Cut Pro is hands down the best choice, at least for me. It's optimized for Apple Silicon, incredibly fast and the magnetic timeline makes editing much smoother compared to traditional track-based editors. And so here's why I use Final Cut Pro instead of Premiere or other alternatives. First is the speed and performance. Because it's designed for macOS, Final Cut runs much faster than Premiere Pro, especially on Apple Silicon Macs. So you can say goodbye to laggy timelines or random crashes. It's also a one-time payment, unlike Adobe Premiere, which requires a monthly subscription. You pay once and own it forever. And then you have the latest features. The Magnetic Mesh tool now makes object tracking even easier and the new AI power the captions can auto-generate subtitles in seconds saving tons of time. Now, if you're looking for a free alternative, DaVinci Resolve is probably the most power option out there, and it has a really powerful free version to use. The learning curve is much steeper compared to Final Cut though. If you're just starting out or need a fast and simple workflow, Final Cut Pro is a much better option in my opinion. I also use Canva and it's my go-to for graphics and animations. It's super intuitive and has thousands of templates that make designing quick and easy, even for people like me that are not professional. You can just drag and drop whatever you want. So there's no need for advanced design skills. It's not a replacement for pro tools like Photoshop or After Effects, but for quick and effective designs, Canva is really hard to beat. And if you need an advanced photo editing but don't want to pay for an Adobe subscription, Affinity Photo 2 for me is the best alternative. It's a one-time purchase, just like Final Cut Pro, and it's fully optimized for Mac. So there's no subscription, you pay it once and you own it forever. It supports PSD files, advancing retouching and even raw photo editing. And it is, in my opinion, perfect for creators. If you need high quality image editing for thumbnails, branding or social media, this is an amazing alternative to Photoshop. So these three tools cover everything I need for video production, graphic design and branding. And by the way, if you're a creator, let me know in the comments which of these apps do you use the most? Or do you have any alternatives that work better for you? So there you have it, my ultimate MacBook setup for productivity in 2025. This is a system that empowers me to achieve my goals and I'm confident it can help you too. Remember, productivity is a journey not a destination. Start by implementing the elements that resonate most with you 
and gradually refine your setup over time. Now, I want to hear from you. Share your own productivity tips and tricks in the comments below. Let's learn from each other and build a community of highly effective MacBook users. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.